Hi, this video will discuss isocost curves, explain what they are, and also provide a graph of what a typical isocost curve looks like. First though, let's relate isocost curves for a firm to a consumer's budget constraint, because there are many similarities between these two. For a consumer, recall they have a budget. They can only spend their money on one of two goods, X and Y. And so there is a line that connects the Y axis to the X axis, or a consumer's budget, that says a consumer, now compare this to a firm who has an ISO cost line. The ISO cost line shows you various input combinations that cost the same. So once again, this will be a line connecting the Y axis with the X axis. But now the Y axis represents capital spending, capital goods, and the X axis represents labor, or how many workers that you hire. So let's get to the definition then of ISO cost line. It's going to show all combinations of inputs that require the same amount of spending or same cost. How do you determine the ISO cost line? First recall the definition of total cost, which are fixed cost plus variable cost. So here our labor costs are considered our variable costs, wage times L, and our fixed costs are the cost of capital, the rental price R times K. So when we write this equation, total cost is equal to wage times labor plus R times K, we want to spend the same amount of money or the same cost. So to remind the reader that we are spending the same amount of money, we're going to put a bar on top of TC. That simply says total cost is not changing. So what can you change? The amount of labor and the amount of capital to spend the same amount of money. Now when we sketch this graph, okay, we sketch this graph, we put K on our vertical axis, our Y axis, and we put labor on our horizontal. So what needs to happen is we need to solve this total cost equation for K. And when you do that, when you manipulate this expression and subtract WL from both sides and divide both sides by little r to get K by itself, this is the resulting expression you have. Total cost, which is given at a fixed amount, divided by r minus wage, time, wage over rental price times L. So on the next page, we're going to sketch this K. Note that TC over R, this is just going to be a fixed parameter. And W over L is going to be your slope. And that's a negative. So this is in the form Y equals MX. Here's our M. Here's our X plus B. This is our B. So let's go to the next slide. And the next slide says, here are different ways you can spend $100. So an ISO cost curve of $100 spent between your labor and capital. Where wage costs you, where a worker's wages is $5 and the rental price of capital is 10 So this will show you, ISO cost curve will show you different ways to spend $100. One option, of course, is do nothing but hire workers. Another option is do nothing but rent machines. And then combinations of workers and machines also that tally up to the $100. So here's the image when you sketch an ISO cost line of 100. So you have a line that connects the y-axis K to the x-axis, which is L. And recall on the previous, we had a bundle A, which was spend all your money on workers, or 20 workers and no machines. That corresponds to this point right here. And then we also had a bundle where you only had rental of machines. 10 machines were rented. You had $100 to spend and they cost you $10 each. They can get you 10 machines. That's this bundle here, E, 10 machines, no workers. And then when you connect those dots, this is the ISO cost of $100. A couple observations before we wrap up on ISO cost. First, the slope of the ISO cost. Recall from here, this was the MX, where L is the X and M is the slope, is W over R. The ratio of your input prices will deflect the slope. 
So in this example, we had wages costing you $5 and rental price of capital was 10. So negative 5 over 10 is simply negative 1 half. So that's the negative 1 half here that we see the slope being negative 1 half. This W over R is the slope of the ISO cost. And what that says, simply to spend the same amount of money, if you give up two and a half machines, you can exchange those for five workers and it costs you the same. So this indicates that your machines cost twice as much to rent as you do your workers. So this is the slope of negative one half, spending $100. So you may ask, what does the ISA cost look like if we spend more money? Well, if you spend more money, the wage rate doesn't change. The rental price of capital doesn't change, so it's still going to have a negative one-half slope. So spending more money increases the total cost, but doesn't change your input cost, and so your slope is a parallel shift outward away from the origin. Likewise, you could spend less money. Don't spend 100 spend something like 50 bucks. Well, once again, that doesn't change your input prices, so your slope stays at negative one-half. It simply pulls the ISA cost a little closer to the origin. And so this is an ISA cost of 50, ISA cost of 100, and ISA cost of 150. These are ISA costs for a firm that shows you different ways to spend 50 bucks on your inputs, different ways to spend $100 on your inputs, or the last blue line, different ways to spend $150 on your inputs, capital and labor.